A few months ago, Guga from the channels Guga Foods and Sous Vide Everything accepted a challenge that I sent to him to try cooking steak in a 2000 degree furnace. He then had me go out there and help him with that, which was a ton of fun. We got to film a lot of great videos and you should check them out. I've got some on my channel, he's got some on his channel. Well, he has now issued me my own challenge. So Guga has done a lot of great videos with dry aging. He's tried doing it in all sorts of weird different food substances and in different methods, but I have a new method that I've been very curious about. See, at the heart of dry aging, you're pulling moisture out of a steak to sort of concentrate the flavor in it. And in the process, enzymes start breaking down the meat to change the flavor a little bit. Well, what I want to do is see if it's possible to dry age a steak by using a vacuum to pull moisture out of it. In a vacuum, water will boil away. It will evaporate at much, much lower temperatures. So the plan is to take a big old piece of meat, ha ha, and we are going to put it in a vacuum chamber, and then that whole vacuum chamber is going to be in a refrigerator, and we're gonna let it stay in there under vacuum for 35 days because 35 days is supposed to be a really good amount of time to dry age something. Now along with that, we're going to have control. We're going to be using Umai bags, which are special membrane bags that are designed to let moisture escape. You wrap the steak in one of those and again, you put it in a refrigerator for 35 days and that's gonna be our control. So we've got two almost identical cuts of meat, which were wonderfully provided by Grand Western Steaks. If you want any sort of cool, fancy, delicious meat, definitely check out their website, Grand Western Steaks. Emilio, you're the best. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna test our control in the Umai bags, which are meant for home dry aging, and then the experiment in the vacuum chamber in the refrigerator. Whew, this is gonna be fun. To set it up, first I'm going to clean, I'm actually gonna wash the outside of these bags so that I can do prep without worrying about too much contamination. And then I'm going to work on getting one of these into my vacuum chamber and the other one into the Umai bag. Now, with our vacuum chamber, so this is the pot that it's gonna be in, we don't quite fit. What I'm gonna do is trim one to fit in the pot and I'm gonna trim the other to match that first one. This is a bunch of napkin holders from the dollar store that I slightly modified to fit. And I'm gonna use these as sort of a frame to hold the steak in place in the pot. I want it to stay in the middle as much as possible. And that's not because I think it's uneven, but it's because if it's resting up against this smooth metal wall, it's gonna have a much harder time letting water out. So this is just to hold it so there's circulation going around it as much as possible. That, I've got two extra. That looks like it is gonna hold everything in place pretty freaking well. I'm very happy with that. Well, this is the vacuum chamber. We're gonna have a lid on this. Whole thing's gonna go into a refrigerator in just a bit. So the steak that we are using from Grand Western Steaks is what they call the Chairman's Reserve. It's not quite technically a prime grade from the USDA, but it's like a really good choice grade. Like this honestly looks like as much marbling as you will very often see in a prime. Maybe the USDA didn't label it prime, but if I saw this in a store, I would think it was prime. So this is like an extra high quality choice grade meat. All right, now that our control is in the fridge and ready to go, it's time to get the experiment set up. And uh, let's take a look at how we're gonna do that. Here is our extra backup refrigerator that I'm specifically going to be using for attempting to dry age this. So here's the plan. I have a vacuum pump and I went ahead and I drilled a hole into the side of the refrigerator. I'm going to connect it to my vacuum chamber. Hey, look at that, the gauge is already moving. That was quick. So the vacuum pump is currently pulling a vacuum in the vacuum chamber. That's not the whole fridge. It's not all under vacuum, just inside the pot. But that's where the meat is, so that's what matters. Now, I have my vacuum pump plugged into a smart outlet that I can program. And after it gets to a full vacuum, I'm going to turn it off. It'll hold the vacuum for the most part, but just to make sure that it doesn't ever leak or run out or some gas is put off by the meat or reduce the pressure. I'm going to have it programmed to turn on for about four minutes every hour for the next 35 days. And I am gonna come in and check on things periodically. The one that's in the other refrigerator, every day or so I'll go out and open the door. That's what the Umai bags say will give you the best result. It helps change out the air and we'll see if we get a good result with both of those. Now something that's interesting is that 
When you are properly dry aging something, if you're using the dry aging rooms or even the Umai bags, usually the ideal situation is actually controlled temperature and controlled humidity. It's not necessarily zero humidity. So this is really an experiment because I don't know what is going to happen to this meat exactly. It's not going to have the controlled humidity that you usually look for when you're doing a proper dry aging. That's why I really wanted to see what this does. Is it going to make a really good dry aging? Is something about the vacuum going to stop the aging process from happening the same way? Is something about the lack of humidity going to stop that process? Is it going to end up being just a giant chunk of beef jerky because it dried it out too much? I honestly don't know the answer to any of those questions yet. And that's why I'm excited to see where this goes. All right, I think I said it was gonna do 35 days, but it's been 40, so 40 days dry aged. Let's get both of our slabs of meat out of their respective refrigerators and see how they're looking. After this had been in that little refrigerator for about two weeks, I pulled it out a little bit to look in on it and see how it was doing, and I discovered something that I really should have thought of. There's actually a lot of liquid down at the bottom of this, which my original thought was that in a vacuum, all of that liquid's gonna get pulled out. Well, what I wasn't counting on was the fact that I was keeping that refrigerator at like 35 degrees Fahrenheit. And at 35 degrees Fahrenheit, you need a really, really good vacuum to pull any moisture out, like to be able to actually boil the water away, which is what I was hoping would happen. And I don't think that the little vacuum pump that I was using that I got off of Amazon is strong enough. Like you need a 99.9998% vacuum to get water to boil at that temperature. But I do think it pulled a lot of the moisture out of the steak. If you saw me putting it in, it's all, it's like vertically standing there like a stack. So there is a puddle of juices down at the bottom, but the steak itself does look like it has dried out a lot. And I'm just hoping it's not too much. I think I mentioned before that this could end up just being a big old chunk of beef jerky. I don't know. Guess we should open it and find out. Okay, we are re-pressurized. I've played around with vacuum chambers quite a bit and it is very normal to me to see something in a vacuum chamber kind of get squished back down as you let all the pressure back in and I watched that happen just now. I watched this whole chunk of meat just kind of squish a little bit as pressure came back into the chamber. So now we gotta open it and hope that we have like a good dry age sort of smell and not like a, oh, something died and has been rotting in my refrigerator for 40 days smell. So what I am smelling is very, very mild. There's almost no smell to it. But what I do smell, it kind of smells a little bit like fermented fruit juice, like pineapple juice that's gone bad a little bit. I'm not sure what to think of that. Now I know all those fancy Meet YouTubers out there. They like their black gloves. Well, I don't have any of those. I have blue. Aww. So I get these much less photogenic blue gloves. Whoa. Let's get this out of here. I bet. Oh. Oh. Okay, that's fine. You can just, just, yep, come right off there. Oh, we've got an interesting gradient happening here. From much drier to very soggy. Like this down here that was just sitting at the bottom it didn't dry out as much, and part of it would have actually been sitting in liquid. Up here, this is, this is hard. Down here, not even all the way at the bottom, just nearer to the bottom, it's very squishy. So I'm interested in like, did part of it dry? Did part of it not dry because it was closer to the water? Since the bottom, about third of this, doesn't seem to have really gone through the drying in the aging part of the process. I am gonna cut that off and I might still use it, but I do wanna separate that from the part that did seem to dry and the part that's still real nice and squishy. With this cut, it's time to open the steak that's in our umai bag, trim everything and get it ready to cook. That has a much stronger smell than the vacuum chamber. Not bad, but it is strong. Now that I've got all four steaks trimmed up and looking good, I'm gonna season them all, keeping it pretty simple with just salt, black pepper, and garlic powder. Of course, making sure to season all sides.
start moving them around a little bit just to make sure that that gradient doesn't have more to do with the charcoal situation than the steak situation. You want to make sure everything gets equal amounts of heat, try and keep this as fair as possible. Now, because of the higher moisture content, as we go down the line, we'll probably have to cook this one a little bit longer than this one, longer than this one, longer than this one, to get an even internal temperature. All right, we have let our steaks rest. They are looking good. I had a probe thermometer in the dry aged steak. No, I thought that it would be the fastest to heat up because it has less water in there. I don't know if it was because of the water or not, Maybe it's just where it was. So I think we probably have a bit of a gradient from like properly medium well done, or maybe a little over to uh, a little more rare as it gets thicker. We'll see. The most important thing though is uh, doing a taste test. So we're going to slice each of these a good bit and then we're gonna taste how they taste. This was our control. This is the one that was just frozen and then thawed. Let's see how we're looking. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of, a little overdone. I'm gonna cut it in a thicker spot, see if it's hopefully a little better, but it may have just gone too long because I was using a different thermometer to test it and relying too heavily on that. It's, it's not horrible, it is a bit overcooked, but that's fine. This is dry aged, but the portion that was wet kind of down at the bottom, vacuum dry aged, the drier part, and umai bag dry aged. All of this was the drier part. All right, so that one is definitely less cooked than the rest. So that thermometer was telling me the right thing. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience home cooking dry aged steak. Maybe it cooks slower. I guess that's just something to keep in mind for the future. We do have pink all the way through. The dry aged one actually is a little more toward red, but I still think it looks pretty good. Still definitely gonna try it. Let's give these all a taste. All right, so here's our control steak. I'm just gonna take a little slice of this. It's good. It tastes pretty good. The, it's a nice tenderness. It's nothing special, but it's still probably at least as good as most steaks I've had in normal like steakhouse restaurants, Texas Roadhouse and Outback, that type of thing. I would not be at all upset if I ordered a steak and that's what I got. Not bad. I'm gonna do the Umai bag first. Like this is the one that's supposed to be the right way to home dry age. And if any of them has that dry aged flavor, this should hopefully be it, and I'll see if any of that comes through. I don't prefer my steaks rare, so I'm going for a little bit farther in the back where it got a little bit more cooked. That's more similar to what that piece was. Okay, here we go. I don't know if you caught that. I reacted before I started chewing, because as it was going into my mouth, I was already like smelling and tasting the dry age flavor very quickly. I'm, I'm a little surprised at the texture. I thought the texture would change more. It's not bad by any means, but it's not like noticeably better. Okay, back to this one. So, aged in the vacuum chamber, but the side that didn't seem to dry out as much. Here we go. Not getting that same with that, that overpowering rush of dry age. Maybe a little bit, not a lot, but honestly, the texture on that one, that one definitely seems to have started to break down more. There was less chewiness, the fibers broke apart more in my mouth. Not as much of that flavor, but definitely more of the texture change that I was expecting to get. Okay, so this is like the main experiment piece. I wanna see how this turned out. This is what dry aged or at least dried the most as it aged in the vacuum chamber. The texture is good. It definitely has broken down a lot. This is very easy to chew in comparison to the other, you know, the control and the dry age control. I do think it's even a little bit easier than the other vacuum chamber one. And the flavor is good, the moisture content is noticeably lower than, than all of them. And that's one of the things that I was talking about as sort of a concern, like it looked like it had dried out quite a lot. And so I was talking about maybe a beef jerky texture. It's not that bad, it's nowhere near beef jerky. It's like noticeably 
dry. Not necessarily unpleasant, you don't think, oh, I need water, but like compared to some of the other ones that were much more juicy as you bit into them, it didn't have as much of that. So, I mean, all of them kind of have a little bit of juice that comes out if I squish on them. Not as much now that I've cut into them already, but I gotta say, it does not have the flavor and smell you would expect from dry aging. It's maybe there like a little bit on the vacuum dry aged one, but it's not the same like, wow, that's a different flavor added onto my steak. I'm gonna say my favorite of these is actually the vacuum chamber aged. The one that was down at the bottom didn't dry out as much. It's still pretty nice and juicy. It's still got really good flavor. It definitely changed texture and got way more tender. I'm very surprised at how much this one didn't change. Like this and this are basically the same chewiness. To answer the question, can you use a vacuum chamber to dry age meat? Sort of, you can get it more tender. I didn't get really that flavor that you look for when you dry age meat. Overall, I'd say you're gonna be better off using some other tenderizing methods. Use a tenderizing hammer for a little bit, or uh, when I was on Guga's channel, we tried putting a steak into a sous vide bath that was an ultrasonic cleaner, and that actually did an amazing job of tenderizing the meat, and that way, you don't have to drill a hole in your refrigerator and wait 40 days to eat the steak. You can just use that machine to cook it. So this did work. I'm very glad that I finally got to try this because I've been wanting to try this for literally for years. I'm not gonna recommend that people go out and do this setup because I don't think the result is great enough to be worth it. Instead, if you really want something cool, get an ultrasonic cleaner and try cooking it like that. If there's anything else you want to see me test, putting it in a vacuum chamber in the refrigerator for who knows how long, let me know. I've still got all the setup. I don't have to drill another hole in that fridge. Maybe we'll give it a shot. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been a ton of fun and uh, I really am glad to get this outcome. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. As always, a very special thank you shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon. I could not do this without you. If you are interested in joining my supporters on Patreon, the link for that is down in the description. See you next time.